It's yeah. movie time. Produced by John DeSando, my father in law. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to shows and reviews online at WCBE.org. And I'm John DeSando. And I'm Gunter Crocker. All right, and this is It's Movie Time. It's Movie Time. What am I doing in Jacksonville, Florida? I don't know. Only you could get me to come here to talk about a show that nobody in our audience has ever seen. I know. I opened up my big <laughs> mouth. <laughs> you did. And I said, I'll do one of these with you. But I'll tell you, I and love it. And now I'm scared. <laughs> no. And I won't say the word. I'll tell you, though, I love it. I love the tip, and I love to be able to give our audience something to think about that maybe they'll go and see this. Uh, let me see. It's called The Professor and the Med. Right. Starring. Mel Gibson and Sean Penn. Boy, how can you go wrong with those two? What's it you about? Can't. How, what's it? What's it about? It's about uh, a. Uh, it's about Mel Gibson, who is a. Now, see, you got to help me here. Go ahead. He, it's about Mel Gibson and Sean Penn, two men that help. Uh, it, the British Dictionary. Yeah, all right. The the famous Oxford English Dictionary. The, the famous. You're Oxford talking to Dictionary. an English major, for whom this was the Bible. And you're talking to a person <laughs> that English was his worst subject ever. In fact, I could tell you that my English teachers would pass me because they didn't want to see me the next year. So we <laughs> so so we we've, we've got Mel playing James Murray. Right. And uh, Mel is an autodidact. Autodidact. Yeah, he's taught himself. That's a big word for me. So do you identify with this at all? No, I don't, but I was amazed at that there was actually a person like this. All right. You, I didn't think there would be people You like have that. to identify, because he becomes the editor of the Oxford English Dictionary without a freaking degree. Right. You're an undegreed guy. And, and that was one of my best parts of this movie that I loved, was is that here's this man... He has no degree, right. and then you got all these hoity-toity Oxford guys. Yes, exactly. They're like, are you yeah. kidding me? You're going to have this guy do that? <laughs> do the right? OED? No, and, wrong. And he was backed up by uh, uh, Steve Colgan. Yes. Right? Steve oh, Colgan. I love Steve He backed Colgan. him up. Yes. Uh, it was playing Frederick James Furnival. Right. But, and anyway, but the, the, the important part here is Sean Penn. They put out the word that they wanted somebody who could literally eat scenery, and they got the guy to do it, Sean Penn. Well, so he. <laughs> well, yeah, they, Sean Penn. They couldn't have picked a, a, a more. Per, and I don't. I do not like Sean Penn. I've never liked Sean Penn. But when you put him in a movie like this, where it's a crazy character, he's perfect for it. Oh, he is it. great. And he was perfect. And for I have to tell you, he wasn't as bad as he could be. And he was actually pretty. Pretty good, considering he really was insane. That he they put him in the insane asylum because he shot somebody he thought was somebody else from the Civil War whom he had branded as right. a doctor, and he was he was hallucinating about him, and he shoots him in front of his wife, the guy's wife. I mean, Gunther, come on, this guy's crazy. But he, and what you know what I, made me think of uh, I was thinking is how did he how was he able to leave the United States? Ha! Huh? where he was a nutcake there, right? <laughs> yes, I know. He was in a home, and then he goes to England. How does he end up on the street? How does that happen? Well, I think it's his hallucinations. His right, hallucinations. but I mean, did, did he, was he in a home there, or did, or did they just let, they, he got out of the home in the United States, and then... Well, I, I think he was pretty free to roam around, probably picked up jobs, but the important thing about this is, he gives the OED 10,000 words. Which is for anybody that, that <laughs> is, right. and, a, and a guy that is a crazy man, which is, which then uh, uh, <laughs> Mel Gibson had no idea yeah. that this this guy was in, in the same as Oh no, so he starts sending him words and when it gets to be several thousand, they got, they got the notice. So they go to the insane asylum to talk to him, and he is lucid at some point, he's crazy at another point. But I love, I love that. It's the battle of words, and when they do words in this movie, yeah. I really like it. I don't think they do it enough. 
Yeah. I don't think there's enough words. This is about words. And I don't think, except when the two of them get to. Right. I, I wish I could be like that. <laughs> I, honest to God. I mean, I, 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 that, that was some of my favorite parts of the movie was when they bantered back yes, and forth exactly. with the words. It was like they were one. Yeah. You know, yep. they were one person. Yep. They could just feed right off of one another. Yeah, I know. Like what we're trying to do right exactly. here. Exactly. And, you know, that was my one of my complaints. Uh, my other is there's way too many plot strains. Now, right. what, what about, you've got um, Dr. William Chester Minor, played by Sean Penn. Right. You've got him shooting this lady's husband, husband in front of her. Right. And this is Eliza Merritt. And what about that plot strain? Uh, it, it's kind of, you know... It, I, I think they did a good job with it. I mean, it made it believable to me okay. that she ends up kind of falling in love with the guy that killed her husband. Yes. Which it, was quite a twist in the story. I think so, yeah. I don't um, know how true it was in the actual story I know, I know, of it, yeah. but it was, yeah. it, it, it did make, they did make it look, to me, it was real. Yeah. And I, I, my only question was, he is such a nutcase. And he, he has killed her husband. It's stretching me just a bit to think that she falls in love with him. But I understand why. Because, he, <clears throat> but I understand why because he's a smart guy. Yeah. And he, and he taught her to read. Right. He taught her to read. And right. She couldn't her read, and he taught her to read. And, yeah. and so, in that particular part where you know she would remember when she was bringing him the books. Yes. And he would he would say something yeah. to her like read something, and then she wasn't able to. She, she would walk away. Yeah, yeah. And it was because he didn't realize that she couldn't read. Yeah. But when, at that moment when he realized that she couldn't read and when she started to, when he started teaching her how to read, it opened up her mind. Oh, of course. Yes. He, I so yes. it opened up her mind to, exactly. to things in the world that she didn't even know. So that So I thought that was... I thought that was, you know, a really good point that showing how important it is to, you know, we don't realize it because I grew up, and, you know, we all learn how to read. I can't imagine what it would be yes. like for someone that didn't know how to read. That was an especially good scene. Yeah. Where he gives her something and she gives it back to him, and then he finally figures out she can't right. read. Yeah. Nice, nice, without playing it too big, and you're even going along with him and saying, "What happened here?" And he says. You can't read, yeah. and that's what he's going to teach her. And his kindness helps mitigate uh, her and her daughter's horror of what he has done. Right. And also could probably do something for his incarceration, but they're trying stuff on him like phlebotomies and and uh, not that not dichotomies yeah. or whatever on this guy that they should not. Well, be he doing. was an experiment for <laughs> this. Because he had a guy that he he realized was a very intelligent man, and he was experimenting on this. Guy. I think he was. He was wrong. You know, I mean, and and you know, one of my favorite characters that Eddie Marson Muncie. Yes, Muncie because, played by a British actor. Because Eddie Muncie Martin. Muncie realized what he was doing to Sean Penn. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that he was he was actually it looked like he was making him more crazy. What did you think about this Muncie character and that strain, that plot strain? I, I thought it, it was perfect. I yeah. thought, you know, he, 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 he was a, a person that, you know, he, uh, of a moral character. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He, he was in a position of authority, but he, he did not like he did. what the doctor, what, uh, yeah. In fact, I forget what yeah. his name is, but what the doctor right, was right. doing, what to the him. head was doing, so that it's nice. It's a nice parallel to show the difference between a man of character, right. like this okay. guard yeah. played by Eddie Marson, and the head of the hospital who goes right as he wants to experiment on this doctor at the expense of a person's mind. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you think about that is is that our mind, our it's the most important thing in our body. <laughs> All right, Gunther. Yes. So glad to have you here. 
Uh, but it's that time in our show. Oh, and yeah. I, I hadn't prepared you for this, so oh, you no, can tell me. Do to me. It's the time in the show. Got to the, sh the film is The Professor and the Madman. Okay. What grade do you award it? I would give it, believe it or not, I would give it an A. Very good. And so, I, I, what do you go by in the movies? What, 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 believe me, this is all intuitive. Okay. I'm, I'm going to award it a B. A B. We don't like to have the same why, grade. Why not an A? Movie uh, way too many plot strains. Some, some really straining believability. But a simple man like me, and that is why you're here, because, not because you're simple, because you're not, but because you like this movie, and you brought it to its movie time, and now we have subjected Can I end this people on <laughs> National Public Radio to this film that nobody's heard about. We've done a public service. Well, I, I think people really should go see this movie. Now, listen, I would have never have looked at this movie if it wasn't for my wife. She put up the reviews, and I'm like, "Are you? You gotta be kidding me!" <laughs> Something about guys building the dictionary and adding yes, a lot of words. Yes, yes. I'm like, I mean, I got grew up as a guy playing football, baseball, basketball, all that <laughs> kind of stuff, and the last thing I did was have a book in my hand to read. All right. So yes. this was once I started watching it, I was amazed. And our audience can see it on HBO. No, what is it on? It was on. Amazon. Uh, we saw it on. I we saw it on Netflix. On Netflix, good. Yeah. It was originally, I think, on uh, maybe Amazon or whatever, but it's now on Netflix. Yes. So if they want, if they have a long night, and they want to debate our audience, they should look at the Professor and the Madman. Other than that, then they should tune in our show again. Yes. For the Professor and the Madman.